In the case of 37-year-old Melody, Marjo, you are not. World famous American TV personality Maury Povich made his debut in 1991 with The Maury Povich Show, a series that would later be renamed to the even simpler title of Maury. And Maury consistently brought its audience the type of full throttle family drama they never knew they needed. Also, Michael and I have dropped our own house tour of our new home that we moved into this year, so go ahead and subscribe to our personal channel if you want to see where we're living and more of what we're up to. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. But long before he'd become infamous for letting deadbeat dads all over the United States know whether they were or were not the father of children that they never wanted in the first place, Maury met the woman who would become his own wife in the very city they'd one day call home together, Washington, D.C. I'm talking, of course, about the trailblazing journalist Connie Chung. When these two first met in the late 60s while working at the Washington television station WTTGTV, their initial interactions with one another were anything but romantic. Connie described how awkward it was to People magazine, stating, I would rip the wire copy off the machine and give it to Mr. Povich. He was very gruff and very matter of fact. He never looked up. I kept thinking, maybe someday he'll acknowledge that I'm a human being. Little did she know how the tables would turn. After working with Maury for about two years, Connie left WTTG TV to pursue better opportunities for herself, and the two wouldn't meet again until five years later in Los Angeles. Having bounced around a few different jobs himself in the intervening years, when they wound up meeting again at a CBS affiliate, Connie was now the big anchor and Maury was her co-star. Then something funny happened. Maury was let go from the network when it began to downsize and Connie, well, she took pity on him for losing his job. Maury explained this serendipitous chain of events to people, telling them how losing his job would ultimately become the best thing to ever happen to him. He said, I always said the way to get to Connie's heart is first, she pities you and then she can love you. The couple would date non-exclusively for the next seven years before deciding to commit to one another and get married married in 1984. Afterwards, the couple moved to New York City where they lived in a Manhattan apartment building known as the Dakota. Considering this was over four decades ago, we don't know much about the apartment that they lived in at the time. Though the building itself is notorious for not only housing other celebrities like Judy Garland, Joan Namath, and Lauren Bacall, but for being the very spot where John Lennon was murdered four years earlier in 1980. The only problem was Maury didn't really enjoy living in the big city all that much, and after 25 years, they finally decided to change things up. In late October of 2008, Connie Chung flew to Washington, D.C. to take part in her high school reunion at Montgomery Blair. While visiting town, she decided to make a quick detour to take a peek at a house with a real estate agent friend of hers. That's when she first laid eyes on the Tudor-style house that would become her new home, an estate situated in the Colorado neighborhood of DC on a third of an acre of land with its very own in-ground pool and koi pond. At the time, this already 80-year-old home wasn't even on the market, but it was scheduled to be listed for just under $9 million. Knowing how much her husband wanted to move back to Washington, Connie really didn't exactly have to hit Maury with the hard sell. She just had him come take a look at the house for himself. After touring the 12,500 square foot structure, Maury instinctively knew that this was their future home. Boasting seven bedrooms, 11 bathrooms, a music room, extensively manicured gardens and a rooftop terrace that gives some amazing views of the city, Connie would sum up how the entire family was feeling with the find by telling the Wall Street Journal, the house just felt extraordinarily right. From that point forward, Maury would take a six hour train ride from Washington to Connecticut two days a week to film his daily talk show right up until recently when news broke that he'd finally be ending his long running series after 30 31 years. 
Legendary talk show host Maury Povich, he's retiring, Lara. Oh, I know, it really is the end of an era. While well, Maury and Connie will now no doubt spend more time in Washington, D.C. than ever before, there's one more location that they'll also be spending a lot of their newly earned free time, the great state of Montana. In addition to their Washington estate, Maury and Connie also own a ranch in Big Fork, Montana that they frequent a few months out of every year. It's not entirely clear when they came into ownership of this property, but around 2006, Maury decided to invest in a newspaper known as the Flathead Beacon, which serves the nearby town of Kalispell and the rest of Flathead County in Montana. This weekly paper is distributed to around 90,000 people, and with Maury's own father having been a well-respected sports contributor to the Washington Post for a number of years, Maury purchased the paper as a way to honor his dad's legacy. The only problem? According to an interview he gave to CNN, it took nearly nine years for the paper to break even. On the more positive side of things, Maury's paper has been profiled by the likes of the Columbia Journalism Review, which was quoted as referring to Maury's baby as the best newsroom in Montana. Better yet, the paper has brought a bunch of joy to Maury's life, even if he's had to learn a few important lessons along the way. He explained to CNN, what we found out is that you just can't make it on print alone. You've got to be a bit more expansive. So I bought Flathead Living. Flathead Living is a quarterly magazine that's also native to Maury's region of Montana. But that's not all. He also bought a local marketing firm and then integrated it with the paper, transforming it into something like a production company, which can give prospective clients more than just a write-up in the paper, including website development and social media advice. Now that Maury has decided to hang up his mic microphone and stop opening all those manila envelope paternity tests, he's planning on spending a lot more time in Flathead alongside his son, who also lives in the area himself. While speaking about his future plans with the New York Post, Maury told them about his son. He was a commercial tuna fisherman, but it became difficult for him. He's now building a house in Montana near mine, and he's the co-owner of a machine shop that makes fishing rods. Sounds to me like Maury has his golden years all mapped out, and after having spent a lifetime witnessing firsthand how an unplanned life can go so horribly, horribly wrong, who could blame him? Maury, you just don't understand. I probably don't. Will Maury and Connie wind up retiring full-time in Montana, or will they always keep their ties to their hometown of Washington, D.C.? I guess we'll just have to wait and see how things turn out. But for now, that'll bring this latest house tour to a close. Thanks for watching today's video, and before you head out, please take a second to answer the following question. Would you be willing to buy a new house in a separate city from where you worked if it meant that you would have to commute six hours twice a week for the next 13 years? Anyways, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Otherwise, you know the drill. Like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications to make sure you never miss a house tour. My name is Kara the Vampire Slayer. Follow me on Instagram to chat, and I will see you all in another one. Bye.